Hello everyone. Welcome to my humble shop. My name is Kevin Toppenberg and I want to talk a little bit about a power scraper that I made uh, by converting a sawzall. And we'll talk a little bit about uh, the, the design considerations and the problems I had as we went along. And uh, I'll break it all down for you. So first of all, this is the unit that I started with. It's a Black & Decker uh, cut saw. There's the uh, label for it. Here is the model information. I got that for 22 bucks at my local pawn shop. The Cadillac of scrapers are Biax scrapers. It's the Biax brand. And um, I'll talk about them in just a second. But most of the power, uh, the Sawzalls, if you want to do a conversion, has a little bit different method of converting um, the motor rotational motor energy into a reciprocal motion this is called a scottish yoke and there's a motor in here that's spinning a gear that then turns this um, gear here and then that has a, a rotary pin with a little bearing on there and that's going to push this in and out and i'll show you that let's go to the farthest part Okay, so the distance from the axis to the farthest here, call that the radius, and then this radius here, those the sum of those two radius is going to be the stroke length of this uh, arm. And on a sawzall, you want a good stroke length so you can saw, but when you're doing the scraping, from what I've been able to read, you want a shorter um you want a shorter stroke. So the point then is you gotta move this pin closer to the axis of rotation, shorten up the radius. And that's, uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. Let's talk about the mechanism used by a biax. Um, I will try to put in the show notes a, uh, a link to, uh, there was a teardown of a biax um, device. And so I looked at that real carefully and I um, modeled it in a, a, th a 3D modeling program called OpenSCAD and I printed it out and um, Obviously, a, a biax doesn't have this square frame and everything, but this is this is the way that it works. And I want to just talk a little bit about it because it it was a little hard for me to understand what was going on to begin with. Okay, so this would be the shaft that comes in for the motor. It rotates, and then there you have the output shaft. So what all's going on here? This part right here, uh, as it comes in, it has a ball in there and this nut or I'm sorry this screw goes all the way through it and you can screw it so that it goes left and right and what that does is it changes the angle the angle that this is bent so this comes in and it's kind of bent like that and then by changing that screw you can change the angle at which it's bent and the more bent it is the more this thing is torqued one way or the other and then as it rotates it will have a, a, a greater swing. So what's nice about this is that with one, one uh, rotation, you can turn this and you can change your stroke length. So that's a, a really nice feature. Um, now I will point out that when I've looked at the parts list for some Sawzalls, like I think uh, some that I saw with DeWalt, use this same principle although they don't have it to be adjustable, but there will be a little bit of a bend, and then as that wings around, it, it changes it to the reciprocal motion. So if you're gonna do your own um, conversion, I would recommend first look at the part number and then go onto the internet and say, whatever this model is, you know, this would have been a, um, a Black & Decker 3110 parts list, and then look and see if it's got the Scottish yoke, because I think this is what you need in order to um, to be able to change the stroke length. If you've got one that uses that bent arm uh, technique, then you're not going to be able to adjust it and you're you're going to not be able to use it. Okay, so let me uh, take this back apart and then um, I'll show you kind of some of the parts and then I've actually got to grease it and we're going to put the whole thing back together. All right, so this is a spacer that I had to 3D print. I'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, this is the gear. The gear consists of um, 
I guess I don't know what the name of it is, but it's a rotary thing here that that uh, one of, that the Scottish arm kind of floats on, the Scottish yoke uh, floats on, and then I had to have another spacer, and then this is the uh, the gear. So if you look in here, right there is where the um, the motor hooks in, and I'm sure there's a, a name for that kind of a gear with these spiral teeth, but I don't know it right now. Pressed in there was a bearing um, to spin on that. So as this thing spun around, um, there was there was a pin. So I need to take this off so I can show you that. Here is the gear uh, by itself. And I've made some modifications here, but initially there was a pin sticking right out here. And that, so that had a fixed radius, so for a fixed stroke length. So I pressed that out. Then this was flush across here. You can see where I've cut this, uh, this channel out right here. So when I was uh, designing this, I um, wasn't kind of sure how it was all going to work out, and I wanted to have a chance to kind of play around with, with seeing it. So I modeled this up and printed it out so that I could uh, kind of have a visual model in my mind. And so I've made this and it would slide. Now, I've, on some of the other um, videos where people have done this, uh, there's a couple of different approaches. One was to just weld a uh, another piece of metal across the top and then cut a T-slot. And that actually was a pretty good way to do it. But concern for me was number one, this part had been cut out and I think that's for weight balancing. And so it wouldn't have had anything to weld to uh, very easily. Um, and then I think one of the other ones, it was just thick enough on its own so that it was high enough that they could just cut a, a good slot. And I really didn't feel like I had that option again, because of these parts that were cut out. So what I did was cut out a shallow groove then I put this on for my slide. So this is gonna be the part that'll, that's adjustable. And then I put a cap on top of it. And it um, seems like this is something like 200,000 uh, thick. So it wasn't, oh, didn't raise the, the entire type because when I put this all back together, it's gonna have to have a top. And for the, uh, the other YouTuber that made one of these and had a kind of a thick piece of metal, he had to make an entire t new top um, for, the, for the device to, to maintain the machinery. So I was trying to avoid that. Another uh, issue that I had is I got all of this machine, I used carbide uh, end mill to cut the shaft and that went fine. And then when I went to go drill to screw the top on, my, my drill bit just would not go in at all. So somehow this is hardened steel. And I was kind of at a loss to know what I was gonna do. So I ended up getting a, um, a masonry drill bit that has a carbide at the tip. And I got, you know, took a little hand grinder and got that super sharp and was able to drill a, a bigger hole through there. Then I, put a steel uh, insert in there that was a soft steel and was able to tap um, tap that drill and tap that so that I had my attachment points. So I have one, two, three, and um, I also then put two into here with a press fit. The other issue is if you look on here, as this thing slides, it's kind of hanging out in the middle of nowhere. And so I was concerned about that. Um, I ended up making another piece right here and putting that in through a press fit into these uh, pre-cut, th these holes came on the gear to begin with. And that at least gives me some extra width for my, my set screw to go uh, and to press on. I decided I was going to do it on both sides, but when I got all done, this just took me hours and hours and I finally decided I, I didn't really need it on the other one. Um, all right, so I'm gonna put this back together and then I'll show you about how the set screws work. I guess I'll just leave this running while I do that. And I'm gonna use some thread locker on these threads. Ooh, that's messy.
So a design here is that when these are tight, we want it to be tight enough that it's got a good secure thing, but not so tight that this won't slide. And um, my machining wasn't perfect because my mills got some run out and and uh, it seemed like a lot of this was a struggle, at least for me. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a uh, beginning machinist and still learning how to do everything works and stuff. So, um, but I finally got it. And then you'll see if there's two set screws on either end and then those um, tighten up to, uh, to, um, to keep it from moving. Now, if I had to do this again, I would try to make that set screw a little bit farther away from the shaft because what happens is when I put the gear on, it blocks that set screw. So the only way to adjust this is to take the whole thing apart. I initially had thought about drilling some holes down through the machine and we'll see that at the end to be able to adjust it. As it is, I'm gonna have to take a lot of it apart to be able to come in here and adjust it, but hopefully I won't have to be doing that that often. All right, I'm gonna tighten this all up and then we'll go on to the next part. I just wanted to show that when I was demonstrating it sliding before, I had forgotten to loosen up the set screws. So these are all nice and tight and it slides easily back and forth. And then when I come in and put a set screw to tighten it up, then it holds well. And you can see, even on this one on this side where I did not put that the shelf, it's half it's at least halfway over that ridge, and that, that gives enough purchase that it that it um, tightens up well. All right, so that's all of that. Now because this is higher, this ring that goes around that the Scottish yoke arm is going to ride on was going to be too low. So I needed that to be up a little bit. So I've made a, um, a ring that is the same height as the cap. That's out of aluminum. And that goes underneath there. And then this will be on there. And so as this thing rotates, the arm kind of floats and it rides uh, sometimes on this outer part. And that helps kind of keep it supported. The other thing I wanted to mention was... Um, because this went on here and we have a slide, that slide was going to interfere with this shaft, which because that shaft had come all the way up to the top of that, all the way up to the top of this flush area. So I had to put this in the in the um, in the mill in the vise and take that down uh, the appropriate uh, depth so that the slide would not interfere with it. I went back and looked at the video and I had let the gear drift out of the camera frame and so you couldn't see what I was pointing at. I was trying to point that this shelf that I made uh, went through and part of the shelf had to fit in right along that side. The other part had to be just the right uh, diameter and it had to all be one piece so that it would press in there and still be up against that uh, thing. So that took me a long time to do. The other issue is if you notice here, I've got two inserts that went into the, the pre-cut holes that, that on the original gear. They'd taken those out for weight, I believe. Um, I have those drilled and tapped, but I ended up actually not using it because I decided I didn't really need three screws uh, there. I didn't think it was gonna add any additional strength. Um, the also, you can see here that I had cut out and I had planned for there to be a screw here, but that, I had cut that out before I realized how much difficulty I was going to have with the drilling and, and making the inserts. And if you see here, that's not a completely flat surface. There was a step and I just thought it was going to be difficult to make a hole across that step. So I just leave, uh, decided to leave that out and go with the three screws, which I think is going to be plenty strong. And just to show some of my other prototype designs, uh, for this cap, this being the gear, that's kind of the way I had this idea of making a cap like this to go on there. That would have filled in all of the um, that empty space and would have given it a better shelf, but this is gonna be just uh, too difficult uh, for me to, to machine. Um, I also had another thing where I just had kind of a half shelf that would go on there. Okay, now we're going to put some grease. Uh, as I think that's going to be fine. All right, now we'll put in our aluminum spacer. 
and then the ring for the arm to ride on. Now, because we have raised up through that spacer, raised everything up, now this shelf here is also a little bit low. So that's where I then 3D printed that. And so then now that raises that up. Then next we put on the arm. Actually, before we that, we got to put on the, um, I don't know if they call that needle bearings, uh, that. And then I wanted to have a little base so it wouldn't um, catch on that set screw as it's spinning around. So I have a little washer. So I'll put that, make sure this is tightened up. And I'm actually going to calculate out my stroke length. Um, I'd like to go for um, something like 15 millimeters. So that would be seven millimeters on each side. So I'll set that. And then I can see where that is. And that's right about, that looks good. So that'll be seven millimeters on each side. It'll be a 14 or 15 millimeter um, stroke length. 14, I guess, to be exact. All right, so I'm going to put my washer on over that. So that will then protect the um, the bearing from riding up and, and getting caught on that set screw that's underneath there. And then I'm going to put this on like that. So I don't need to worry about it running on the plastic because this piece goes in there. I forgot that. And that goes on top of that plastic so I can clean that grease out. So the, the little arm that was at the base just was a support for this and then the arm ran over top of that. So I then lifted it up 200,000, put a piece of plastic in there. And now this goes on there like that. So then actually it this piece here is what rides on that that rotating ring. And then the the arm goes on top of that. Like that. All right. This then is the cap to hold down. So here is where I initially thought I would drill some access holes to be able to try to get down in there. You, but you'd see I'd have to get it rotated to just the right spot to be able to try to get access to the two set screws. And again, this that one set screw is blocked, so I'm just not gonna do that. I'll just, it doesn't take too long to take it apart. All right, so now I've got this. The other thing that we needed to do was to have a handle, and you'll see that at the end. Um, so I designed up a little piece, a prototype to see how that would go, and that would go right in here. I 3D printed this. Um, you could probably buy one pretty easily. There's a, a bolt in there where the, the, the plastic has a hex to keep it from rotating, and then the bolt comes down. So the bolt is actually about this long because it's from here to here. So that, and then that's going to go onto right here, and that's how I'm going to hold it. Goodness, let me put this back together if it didn't fall apart. So I needed something for the uh, handle to screw into. So I made this little part out of aluminum and that goes right there. And then the handle will screw into it. All right, so let's put this together. All right, so let's tighten this up. You know, one of the fun parts of watching YouTube videos is the ability to see a whole project in just a very short period of time. And uh, I've been working on this for at least a month. So you know, sometimes it's easy to think that everything just goes together smoothly, but it doesn't always work that way. So I'm going to have to make a little tweak here. <clears throat> These screws, as they go in to there to uh, tighten this bridge, they're not getting down in far enough to engage. And I don't want to try to find a replacement for this. I'm guessing that's metric and my local big box store here in the US isn't going to have that. So what I'm going to do 
is I'm going to, the, it's close, it's very close. I think if I just take this down a little bit, um, maybe a hundred thousand, I think that's gonna give me enough purchase. Okay, so I got a three eighths inch Enmo, three eighths inch, uh, all right, call it. Okay, so I've got that in there. I've lined that up. Just did it by eye, which is not gonna be quite as accurate, but this isn't a critical part. Okay, I've got that touched off and I'm gonna raise the, the table up 100,000. That's 50,000, let me see what that looks like. All right, I got that other side, uh, the additional 20. We're gonna take 70 out of here. All right, that's 70. So there it is now with the counter set. Let's see how that works. That seems to have done the trick because it's tightening, tightening up now. Next part is the uh, covering. Because we raised it to the 200,000s, the, this height is now higher. So this would not slide over it. So I cut it in half and printed some little uh, spacers and then set those in there and then tried to fill it in the best I could with a two-part epoxy. And that seems to be nice and strong. And that will fit over there like that now. And I cut out a, uh, an access at the top again for this part as well. And to keep it on, we're going to use these little pieces here. Okay, so these end pieces are going to um, screw on here and then that's going to prevent this from sliding off. It's going to hold it on. And because there's going to be a, another part here, which I'll show in a minute, this needed to be able to be removed without having to slide off the end of the arm. It couldn't just have a simple hole through it. So I've got two pieces so that they are overlapping. So one will go on the bottom, the other one will go on the top. And then if you see that it kind of is completely surrounded, the hole's completely surrounded. All right, so I'm gonna get that screwed in and I'll be back. Okay, for the next part, we wanna take this and we wanna get it extended out, kind of like that. And it's supposed to be down at a 15 degree angle so again, I modeled some stuff up to see what I would like. And then I cut these pieces out. One goes on one side, the other one goes the other. There's a pin for the this side. And then this one has a screw that goes through it to keep them from be able to slide in and out. And there we have that. That's what it looks like on the other side. All right, let's talk about this last piece. So these are the two plastic uh, prototypes that I made. So pretty simple. And there we have it. But I think I may need to refine this a little bit. Screw in there to, to hold that part down. Um, for right now, it's pretty sturdy. And then comparing this to the hand one, you can see that that comes up at an angle there and I may want to take off an angle here to match that so that's some more to to consider all right so there it is <clears throat> before I can really get it going these inserts come with a flat top and they're supposed to have a radius. I'm still learning this and that's part of my uh, journey here. The last thing I want to do, this is the original plastic rubber thing that went around this and again because the thing is bigger it won't go all the way around so there's going to be a little bit of a gap. Here I've got it all laced up. I um, 3D printed some little, uh, we'll put this in. I think we're done, except for that fuel changes it's gonna make down here. All right, I'm gonna try this just to show it working. Uh, I haven't put a curve on here, so it's probably not gonna do right, but at least I can show it working. And this
This wasn't really planned, but look how good it fits inside this original case. How about that? That's pretty slick. Put the handle in there, you're ready to go. Well, that's all. Thanks for watching. I'll have to uh, experiment with this and figure out if it's a boondoggle or if it'll actually uh, help me scrape some stuff in. Um, hope that helped you and uh, giving you some insights if you want to do one of your own. Thanks.